could we see another opportunity for the African continent to really unite and form a United States of Africa that would, you know, put it in the map of the world superpowers? Well, as you know, we already have an African continental free trade area. Recall that about a half century ago, the European Union did not exist. It fundamentally started with about six nations as a kind of coal and steel community, and then evolved into a European economic community, and then into the European Union, in which we all know today. Uh, Africa seemingly is on a similar path with the African continental free trade area, which bids fair to knock down trade barriers to tr create one market, for example. I think it's inevitable that there are going to be hiccups along the way because the analogy that you use from President Nairari a few moments ago between Burkina Faso and the United States, you could use a similar analogy between, say, South Africa and Swaziland, or between Nigeria and Benin. Uh, in other words, we're talking about economies that are hardly comparable in size and power, uh, seeking to unite uh, under one roof. That's going. That's not going to be easy. Uh, but the attempt is, is being made. Certainly, the example of the African Union, headquartered in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, is an example of uh, Pan-African cooperation, just as the regional blocs. You mentioned the East African community. Uh, you could mention the economic community of West African states, ECOWAS. Uh, you could mention the Southern African Development Community, uh, which includes the nations of that region, which, by the way, have stood by uh, Zimbabwe as it has come under unremitting pressure from the United States and its allies because Zimbabwe had the audacity and temerity to engage in land reform, attempting to reverse the fruits of settler colonialism that is to say, uh, we know that beginning in the 1890s, you had a massive invasion of that Southern African nations by British alleged conquerors who even had the nerve to rename the nation Rhodesia after the freebooter and pirate Cecil Rhodes of Great Britain. And we know that that led to a liberation war from 1965 to 1980. You can see my book on that subject and about the US role there, just as your audience may want to look at my book, White Supremacy Confronted, on the struggle of Southern Africa as a whole against US imperialism. In any case, uh, independent Zimbabwe, as noted, sought to reverse the fruits of settler colonialism, which was greeted with hysteria in London and Washington, even though under the Lancaster House Accords that led to independence in 1980, uh, the parties had agreed that there would be this kind of land reform, but uh, London under Tony Blair, Tony Blair balked, and that led to sanctions being imposed on Zimbabwe in an effort to drive the economy into the ditch an effort that continues. Indeed, it's quite striking, is it not, that uh, President Mnangagwa of Zimbabwe uh, did not receive an invitation to the aforementioned uh, summit, December 2022 in Washington, although I understand there was Zimbabwean representation of a sort. So once again, Africa should ask Washington Show your good intentions, not only by doing justice to your own population of African descent, but also lifting the savage sanctions against Zimbabwe, which has negative repercussions throughout the region. It hampers the economic and political integration 
of this region. And it makes it difficult to take steps alongst the path, alongst the road of Pan-African unity of a sort that you suggested in your comment, as long as Zimbabwe is treated like an outlier, as long as Zimbabwe is tr treated as if it were a polecat. And what's even more curious is that a lot of people in the United States, believe it or not, despite the fact that Zimbabwe has opposition political parties, uh, has an opposition press, and despite the fact that in many African nations like Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea, just to cite two amongst many, not to mention Swaziland, which is an absolute uh, monarchy. Where is the opposition press? Where is the opposition parties? Yet Zimbabwe in the United States is considered to be the gross violator of human rights. And most folks in the United States could not point out Cameroon on a map, even if you showed them where Nigeria is. And so this is the kind of ignorance that allows for this sort of gross exploitation of a nation like Zimbabwe, which is not only an outrage, it's an insult to Africa. It's not only an insult and an outrage to Zimbabwe, it's an insult and outrage to the entire continent, and indeed to all of progressive humanity.